My mom told her. No, she should have known way before this. Way before what? Like when she was a baby. No, so she you don't understand that you're a child. Baby. They don't understand. No, I'm talking you about mean. a baby. She would grow up knowing, knowing who her who biological father was. I'm paying for it. I'm paying child support still. She was about eight months pregnant, and I got a courtesy call at work. A courtesy call? Yes, that, that's not true. I got a courtesy calling you to let you know I'm pregnant. Don't that's worry, not you're not father. It's my boyfriend, baby. That's not I just want to know just in case you hear something in the street. I paid for all our food, our hotel. You didn't have to pay for food. We're getting the food from your job. I still had to pay for it. He told okay. me that he basically was big rich person Hollywood. I ain't never said that. That he had a big house on the beach. That he had like six cars, taking pictures by different cars yeah. every day. Buckle up, folks. Ms. Markham Love spills the beans about her rough childhood, including the jaw dropper that Mr. Tucker might not be her dad. This bombshell was dropped on Mr. Tucker at a custody battle, turning his world upside down. You won't believe what's coming up next. Markham Love, you're here because you you claim your mother, Ms. Nasir, lost you to foster care and left you torn between fathers, including the. Defendant. Now, Mr. Tucker, you say a bomb was dropped on you. When years ago, you showed up to a court hearing the gang to the of Ms. Markham Love. You claim that day her mother delivered the news to you that you may not be by a lot father. Yes, Your Honor. Get ready for a twist. Ms. Markham Love learned through the grapevine, aka her grandmother, about the possibility of Mr. Tucker not being her real dad. This left her feeling more mixed up than a blender on high. Just wait until you see what happens next. It's a doozy. I don't have a close bond with her. I've been living from foster home to foster. I found out at 12 that Myron, Mr. Tucker, may not be my father. Now, how did you find that out? Shireen had told my grandma related to me. And so when you heard that, what did you think? I felt hurt, betrayed, and uh, lost with emotion. You thought soap operas were dramatic? Wait until you see this. In a courtroom showdown, Ms. Nasirapur and Mr. Tucker go head to head over who the real daddy might be. She admitted she wasn't sure if Mr. Tucker was the father right in the middle of her pregnancy. A letter in the mail stating that daughter was in foster care, and I I went to Sacramento to go to court, try to get her. The city report stood up and said that I might not be the father. Your Honor, that's not true. Four months pregnant, I told Myron it could be another man. I never gave no names. He left me and went to L.A., supposedly. I did not go when to Abby, no. he was with his girlfriend time that was, I was pregnant. Not, no, 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 no. Oh, the drama intensifies. The court debates why no one thought to do a paternity test when Ms. Markham Love was just a tot. This could have saved everyone a whole lot of headaches. Stick around, because the next bit is even more jaw-dropping. My mom told her. No, she should have known way before this. Way before what? Like when she was a baby. No, so she you don't, don't understand that you're a child. Baby. You don't understand. No, I'm talking about a baby. She would grow up knowing, knowing who her who biological father was. for it. I'm paying child support still. Pay for it. If I would have known, I would have paid for it then. You knew so, when she was 12. You said it still isn't done. Wait. She's 22 years old now. 12 years old. Where was she at? Grab your popcorn. Mr. Tucker lays his heart on the line, claiming Ms. Markham Love as his daughter, no matter what the tests say. His emotional plea tugs at the heartstrings. But hold on to your seats. This roller coaster's got more twists coming. So in your mind, you were father. There was no reason to take a test. Exactly. At That's seven the years way old. I feel so right you now. heard oh this in court. At seven years old. Did you say, I'd like a test now? No. At that point, why not? You just said. Because I feel in my heart that she's mine. All right. Here's where it gets even spicier. Ms. Markham Love walks us through her childhood memories with Mr. Tucker and the bumpy road after she entered foster care. It's more tangled than last year's Christmas lights. You won't want to miss what's up next. It's a real kicker. Was he involved in your life at all as a child? Growing up, I was living in Bakersfield with him, and then when I turned five, we moved to Sacramento, and he, when I got put in foster care at seven, he was granted visitations with me, and the last time I seen him was when I was nine. From nine to 16, I did not see him. Things just got real. Dive deeper into the soap opera worthy lives of Ms. Nasirapur and Mr. Tucker, featuring secret marriages and hidden affairs. It's messier than a toddler with spaghetti. There's a whole lot more to this story than what she's saying. Been in this relationship, but it's true. You were living with them as a family, and then you disappeared. You went and got married to someone else? Yes. How could you disappear like that and Not go once, marry someone twice. else? I'm trying to put this on me, Not but you're talking about you cheated on me with a pizza guy, though. You were in LA. You Hold on to your coffee, folks. Ms. Nasirapur opens up about her rocky past, including a stint in the slammer, hoping to patch things up with her daughter. It's as heart-wrenching as a season finale. What's next? It's sure to crank up the drama. Lee, I made a lot of mistakes. I can tell you love your daughter. I do love my daughter, but you know what? I went to prison. I've done a lot of bad things. I forgave myself. I got out. I asked her for, you know, when she's ready to forgive me, she said she did forgive me. I had to earn that. You know, I'm sure I had to earn that. Trying my best. But if I was on drugs and I was dope fiend, Myron, then you should have stepped up and hurt if I was doing so bad. Can you handle
handle more? Ms. Markham Love shares her deep need for closure about who her real dad is. It's like the final puzzle piece she's been missing. Brace yourself. The truth bomb about to drop is epic. You knew this man to be your father your whole life, and then you realize he may not be. You, What do you hope for today? I just want closure. If Mr. Tucker is my father, I know his family. If Mr. Goldstein is my father, I would want to know his Are you ready for the big reveal? As it pertains to 22-year-old Britt Markham Love, Mr. Tucker, you are not her father. Wow. Buckle up, here we go. Ms. Myers steps up to claim that Mr. Black is the father of her little dude, Logan, all thanks to their past fling. She's pretty miffed because after initially playing dad, Mr. Black has ghosted them. Just wait until you hear Mr. Black's side of the story. It's a doozy. Ms. Myers, you say four years ago, you had a relationship with Mr. Black that resulted in the of your son, Logan. You claim that after initially acting your son, Mr. Black turned back on you and started denying your baby. Yes, your honor. Hold the phone. Mr. Black fires back, labeling their brief encounter as just a casual fling and slams Ms. Myers as an opportunist. He's adamant that he's not Logan's dad, blaming his doubts on her alleged promiscuity. Boy, oh boy. Wait till you see what's coming next. Mr. Black, you stay only a two-week fling with Ms. Myers while she's cheating on her boyfriend. You say Ms. Myers is promiscuous opportunist and you will prove are not her child's father. Yes, Your Honor. Grab your tissues. Ms. Myers paints a sad picture of little Logan, who thinks Mr. Mr. Black is his real dad. She talks about how Mr. Black missing out on big moments like birthday parties has really bummed the kid out. So when it's Logan's first day of school, he'll ask where is Tyrell. Because he thinks Mr. Black is biological father. Mm -hmm. That's what you've told him. Yes, ma'am. I have a lot of doubt on the reason why I'm not the father compared to what Jasmine had done with a lot of shady things that made me believe I am not father. So, so he doesn't show up for his day parties. He promised Logan that he would come to our birthday party and he did not show up. So Logan was very upset. You're not going to believe this. Here they go bickering about how long they were actually an item. Mr. Black is sticking to his two-week story, but Ms. Myers insists they were practically an old married couple for months. Uh, we met on Facebook. We went to the same high school. So you went to high school together, mm -hmm. and then you reconnected on Facebook. Yes. And then what happened? That turned into dating, it a turned relationship? It into dating. We were, talk, like, we, almost, were we were talking for almost like three months before we're... Tyrell went back to his other child's mother. We and then he dating. accused me of two cheating weeks. and lying. It was, it was two not two flame. weeks. It was more than... It was a two-week flame. Wait, what now? A major bomb drops about when Mr. Black got the news of the pregnancy. Ms. Myers says she told him early on, but he claims it was way later, fueling his paternity doubts. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more tangled, she was about eight months pregnant, and I got a courtesy call at work. A courtesy call? Yes, that, that's not true. I got a courtesy call you to let you know I'm pregnant. Don't that's worry, not you're not father. It's my boyfriend, baby. That's not I just true. want to know just in case you hear something in the street. I texted him and told him that I was sick. He told me, well, maybe you should go to the doctor. So I ended up going to the doctor and finding out that I was actually pregnant. Oh, snap. Ms. Myers accuses Mr. Black of bailing and going AWOL once the baby news hit. This guy apparently started fading into the mist, leaving her to handle everything solo. But there's more to this soap opera, so don't go anywhere. Myers, Mr. Black just testified clearly. He did not even know you were until you were eight months pregnant when you called courtesy That's call. a lie. What it is, he doesn't want, want to know that he has three different kids, three different women. That doesn't bother me. If that was the case, he we could have been, been, been that He doesn't been. want the world until he has another child by another woman. Okay. Are you kidding me? At the hospital, Mr. Black gets what he calls a courtesy call then gets the cold shoulder and can't visit Ms. Myers because her current beau is there. This saga has more twists than a pretzel. What's next is just wild. Same day she had a yarn, I was actually at work on my lunch break and I got a phone call saying, hey, the hospital, I'm in labor, I'm about to have him. Same time, I he got a to work. get off of work to the hospital to lie. see him. When I got there, they told me I was not allowed to see her because she refused to have me That's come in the room because her That's boyfriend at the time was there. This just keeps getting juicier. Despite all the drama, Ms. Myers stands firm that Mr. Black is the daddy. Based on their intimate past, and Logan's resemblance to him. Brace yourself because the truth bomb is about to drop. I'm 100% that he's his dad. Like, I slept with nobody else. He looks just like him. He's lactose intolerant. Logan's what that got to do with it? That's usually something that's how red. I'm still stuck at lactose. I don't think that's sufficient evidence, Ms. Myers. Here comes the moment of truth. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Black, you are the father. Can I see him?
Hold on to your popcorn. This just got real spicy. Miss Bargie drops the bomb about her love triangle gone wrong, creating a daddy dilemma with her hubby and her ex, each thinking he's fathered her two-month-old mini-me, McKenna. She's crossing her fingers that the DNA test swings in her hubby's favor to glue her marriage back together. But keep your eyes peeled because the next scene cranks up the heat. You admit cheated on your husband and now are caught in a paternity triangle with both men believing they fathered your two-month-old daughter, McKenna. Yes, sir. You are hoping Day's DNA result prove that your husband is her father so you can save your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. You think that's wild? Check this out. Mr. Bargy pours his heart out about his bond with McKenna, sharing those sweet daddy-daughter moments that tug at your heartstrings. He's all in, hoping the test proves he's the real dad. As he gushes about his baby girl, the room's thick with anticipation. Stick around, because the plot's about to thicken. I could be at work for 10 to 12 hours a day. I take five minutes out of my time, busy or not at work, video call, sit here, I wake her up when I get home. As soon as I, she hears my voice, she's smiling. And as soon as she hears the car pull in. Your baby, in your heart, that's your baby. That is my baby. And you are hoping that today's result affirm that. Just when you think it's calming down, am another curveball. Mr. Lawson reminisces about his happy days, thinking he was starting a fam with Miss Bargie. As the courtroom drama unfolds, it's clear this paternity puzzle has more pieces than they thought. The upcoming twist? You won't see it coming. Thought so. Uh, I was happy because me and her talk family a life together. This is the start of the family you two said you wanted together. Yes, ma'am. This babe. Miss Bargy, at that time, did you also know that your husband could potentially be the father? At first, I thought it was Calvin for sure. Then going back dates and everything, things started to not add up. Can you believe this mess? Out comes a twist you wouldn't expect in a daytime drama. Miss Bargy never even told her hubby she was pregnant. Instead, a nosy pal spills the beans, leading to a showdown that adds another layer of mess to this already sticky situation. Fasten your seatbelts. It's about to get bumpier. I did not tell my husband, period. He had a mutual friend that was on my Facebook. They had actually sent him a picture posting an ultrasound, and then he started contacting me and met him and talked to him and tell him I am pregnant. And then we started talking about the dates and everything, and even Mr. Bargy had stated that he'd be the father as well because of the dates. Yikes. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Miss Bargy debates the daddy drama, really hoping her hubby is the father so they can ditch the drama and play happy families. She makes a strong case for her hubby over Mr. Lawson, who's been kinda MIA on the dad front. But don't wander off. The big reveal is next, and it's a doozy. Have you thought about the result? If Mr. Lawson is McKenna's biological father, have you thought about where you go from here? If Mr. Lawson is her father, I do not want him to be a part of her life, period. Like, I want rights terminated because I, my daughter deserves so better. My husband has been there and took care of her since all this has happened. He has been an amazing father, and, and McKenna deserves so much better. Ready for the job? Dropper. Biological father is Mr. Lawson. You are McKenna's biological father, Mr. Lawson. So, check this out. Ms. Alston spills the beans that she really wants her little one, Jasmine, to have a dad in her life because she didn't have one while growing up. It's a heart tugger because she's all about making sure her daughter doesn't miss out on having a dad. Buckle up. The next bit is a doozy. Of Alston versus Jones, Delk, and Harrison. Ms. Alston, you say for the past two years been living in uncertainty and confusion. You're not yes. sure which of three men fathered your two-year-old daughter, Jasmine, and say you grew up without a father and don't want the same for your little girl. Which is correct. You're not going to believe this. Miss Alston lays it all out about her roller coaster love life, admitting she got busy with three dudes in just two weeks. She talks about her main squeezes and a little whoopsie in the form of a fling, setting up a real soap opera vibe. Well, basically, Your Honor, I did have sex with all three men within a two-week period of time, but out of the three men, I did have a relationship with two, Joe Jr. and Mr. Jones right here. I met Mr. Jones um, back in high school. We dated for two and a half years. I did, however, a few months after the relationship, I did cheat and I told him of Oh, man, you gotta hear this. In a total plot twist, Ms. Alston and Mr. Jones get into the nitty-gritty of how she dropped the pregnancy bomb on him, stirring up all kinds of drama with a side of doubt about who the daddy could be. Hold on to your popcorn, because this soap opera is just getting spicy. Here's how she told me she was pregnant. She said to me, how would you feel if you're not the dad? That's not how I told you. I told you after the test that you may not be the father. There was no test to begin with. Prior to your pregnancy, did you tell him he may not be the father? About, I think I, I was about past the three months. Did she really just say that? Ms. 
Fairchilds throws a curveball into the story, contradicting Ms. Alston's version of the birthday drama, revealing she was actually texted to bring the son to the hospital. The plot thickens, and you'll want to stick around for the next twist. Miss Ashley, she texts me the day of, letting me know it was happening right then. Can I bring my son there to the hospital? For her to stand here and say she didn't know he was going to be there, that is a complete and flat out lie. No, it's not That's because... why I went and I picked him up from school and I brought him there. Things are heating up now. Ms. Alston talks about how Jasmine is practically being raised by a village, with grandparents stepping in big time. Despite the daddy drama, it's touching but messy. And guess what? The next part will make your head spin. You have helped, yes. Robert, no. right now, if I had to sign my daughter over, I would either sign it to you, Miss Tina, or to Mr. Harrison, to Robert at all. The reason why I haven't done anything for Jasmine as of yet, mm -hmm. I've been wanting a DNA for Jasmine whole life right now. Like my mother just said, every time it came down to do something, she would go part. But once it's time for us to actually do it. Here's where it gets juicy. Mr. Delk steps into the spotlight, talking about his brief but memorable cameo in Ms. Alston's life and his major role in Jasmine's world. He's been playing dad, even though the paternity is all up in the air. Don't go anywhere. The reveal is up next, and it's a tearjerker. Lee admitted in court today that she was intimate with three different men during the time conception, one of which started watching her in June. Was when you was doing your little paperwork and trying to find a job and everything. Basically, what was going on was, like say, we wasn't having no boyfriend. It was one night stand. You had a one night stand. That's it, one night. Grab the tissues, folks. Mr. Delk makes a heartfelt declaration about his bond with Jazz, saying he's her dad. DNA, or no DNA. It's super sweet and shows just how deep his feelings go. Brace yourself. The grand finale is about to drop, and it's a big one. Today, Mr. Delk, do you want Jasmine to be your biological daughter? She's my daughter regardless. The first person she's gonna run to probably pass the grandmama, but she definitely will come for dad. I mean, she will. If I walk out that door, she will holler for me. What are your hopes? Well, it's like I'm from the beginning to Miss Ashley. Either way it goes, if she is my son, and that means I am her biological grandmother, or if she's not. You're not ready for this. The big moment arrives, and bam. It has been determined that the biological father is Mr. Delk. Guess who's back? Again, Judge Lake opens the case by reminding Mr. Scott that this isn't his first rodeo in her courtroom. He's been here before, once proving he was the dad and once not. The judge seems half amused, half exasperated by his now third appearance. Mr. Scott, you've appeared in this courtroom for two previous cases with DNA results. Proved you were the father of a child and the other proved you were not. Now you say you are here yet again. Round three, here we go. Mr. Scott is on the spot for possibly fathering his eighth child with a fifth woman. Despite already having seven kids with four others. He strongly denies being the dad of the latest edition, showing signs of frustration and fatigue, these ongoing accusations. Different women to deny that father, child number eight, with mother. Miss Smith, you admit cheated on Mr. Scott, but say you believe it was you argued that the only reason he's denying daughter is because he can no longer troll you. Money Matters just entered the chat. Ms. Smith, the mother of the alleged eighth child, accuses Mr. Scott of conning her into paying for his travel expenses. She's gunning for $2,500 back for flights and hotels. Into paying his travel costs when he visited Michigan, and you were asking the court to award $1,500 for reimbursement of airline and lodging expenses. So, Mr. Scott. I met on the website. You know, I was looking for love, and um, I went to a website, ran into Crystal. Trust issues, table for two. As they air their dirty laundry, both parties accuse each other of cheating. Mr. Smith had given Mr. Scott access to her voicemail, where he heard other dudes. This revelation turns up the heat on their already fiery dispute. Things, you know, she gave me her voicemail, and I hear dudes in the background. I like, gave my voicemail pass. Okay, yeah, true that. But then dudes are leaving voicemails to her talking about, oh, you. You I had girls leaving like, voicemails girl, on your phone and calls. supposed to do that if you have I a do man. Have dudes I are do not. Have male well, dudes friends. leave messages talking about you sexy. And you ain't supposed to be calling like other people. So hold on. This is before you ever met her. Yeah, this is before, but we talked every day. And they finally meet. Spoiler, it's not pretty. After an eight month online romance, Mr. Scott and Ms. Good Smith meet face to face. The encounter is far from fairy tale with squabbles over who paid for what, showcasing their rocky relationship. I paid for the whole trip for him to come here the first time and then his, for his ride here. Hotel. No, he did she not. She paid for me to come back. I paid she for all paid, our food, she, our hotel. You didn't have to pay uh, for food. We're getting the food gas. from your job. He told okay. me that he basically this big rich person Hollywood. I ain't never said that. That he had a big Hollywood. house on the beach that he had. Even the judge can't believe her ears. Judge Lake questions Mr. Scott's repeated claims of searching for true love, hinting that she's heard this song before. She challenges his sincerity, suggesting a pattern of not so great relationship choices. Time you appear in the courtroom, 
you said that same thing. I wouldn't Mr. say Scott. it was love on the internet site that I met him on. I wanted. So, Miss Kalan, you find out you're pregnant. And then what? He was uh, happy. Quote, I... unquote, oh, mommy, we're going to be family. Things just went off the deep end. Mr. Scott pulls out all the stops with mind games to confirm Ms. Smith's unfaithfulness, adding another layer of complication to their twisted tale. His sneaky tactics reveal a lot about how he deals with conflicts. Apologies. Yeah, and I said, I promise you, I won't leave. Tell me what happened. She said, he took advantage of me. We had sex right there, but it didn't last that long because I loved you. I did lie. She should have been a lying. lot about that. And she didn't, and she didn't in there like, look, babe, I'm sorry. This, I didn't mean for it to. Point in our relationship, we were already. She told me this we after did not talk told me this relationship. Cha Ching, let's talk cash. Ms. Smith lays out the receipts of what she spent on Mr. Scott's visit, turning this moment into a major point of contention. The judge examines the evidence, highlighting the disparity in what Ms. Smith shelled out versus Mr. Scott's claims. Or some type yes, I that uh, outlines what paid for. So you've got a round trip bus ticket, Palmdale, California, hotel expenses for 461. Surely print, print that the out. big man California didn't ride bus all the way to Drum roll, please. Mr. Scott, you are Bob. Told Who you. Who couldn't their legs closed? Take it, baby. Legs closed, really. Guess who's coming to dinner? Mr. Angelier claims Miss Vargas was still Mrs. Somebody Else, and they started their little rendezvous and she got pregnant. He tells us she first said, no, not your kid, but later flipped the script after her marriage hit the bricks. Miss Vargas fesses up to trying to save her sinking ship of a marriage by fibbing, but now wants to prove Mr. A is indeed the daddy. Claim the defendant, Miss Vargas, was married and having an affair with you when she got pregnant. You say she initially told you that you were not father of her 11-month-old son, but dropped the bomb that the child was Fourth right, after her marriage was over. Ms. Vargas, you admit you lied to Mr. Angelari because you say you were trying to save your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Spill the beans, Mr. Angelari. He tells us how he and Ms. Vargas went from sharing office gossip to sharing uh, more personal stuff. They started as work pals, graduated to drinking buddies, and one thing led to another. Bam! Next thing you know, they're more than just friends. He spills that all this kicked off after she told him her marriage was kaput. Keep your eyes peeled because what's coming up will make your jaw drop. Well, first of all, Your Honor, Ms. and I, we were never in relationship. We worked together. We were good friends. She would come to me to confide with me over her rocky relationship that she had with her husband. Rocky. That's what happened at first. Then a few weeks later, came in, said it's the last straw. I'm completely done with them. Next thing you know, we became better friends. She had brought her kids over a few times. We'd go out at night. We started drinking a lot together. Oh snap. Did she just say that? In a heated moment, Miss Vargas accuses Mr. Angelier of plotting to plant the pregnancy. The audience and Judge Lake are not having it. Cue the courtroom crackdown with stalking accusations and heated words flying. The emotional roller coaster is just getting started. You won't want to miss what happens next. It's a wild ride. That night when when we, you know, had sexual intercourse, planned to get me pregnant. I feel like you did. Oh, no, that's a lie. Hold on. That night, Your Honor, I, uh, well, I feel like from the beginning, he's always stalked me. Even my friends at, at, at work would always tell me, you know, he's looking at you again. Look said the him. same thing to me. Who's the daddy? The plot thickens as they dive into the daddy debate. Was it the estranged hubby or Mr. Angelier during the conception conundrum? This segment sifts through the timelines and Miss Vargas's strategic maneuvers as her marriage crumbles. Your Honor, at the time, we were separate. So you two were intimate? Yes, just once. And then you found out you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. Were you also? Yes, Your Honor, a month before, me and him had sexual intercourse. We, you know, me and my husband were still. Had been intimate with your husband and also Mr. Angelaire. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. Hold the phone, he's got a hunch. Mr. Angelaire gets all sentimental when he spots a pic of the kid, reigniting his daddy instincts. He's back in the game, folks, determined to find out if he's the father. This heartfelt revelation sets the stage for some serious courtroom drama, so don't go anywhere. It's about to get even juicier. No, I didn't even talk to her until, because I have two kids that live in Washington State. When she told me there's no chance, it is yours, there's no way at all. Long term, when I was in, I was trying to get back up to Seattle, be with my other two children. I didn't want to get in a serious relationship or have any kids. Like I said, up, I was trying to save my marriage. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to do the thing, and I felt like I was doing the right thing. The DNA results are in, and guess what? 11-month-old Giovanni Varga. Mr. Angelari, you are Bob. Thank you so much.